how to naturally dye blacks, greys and dark colours. Hi friends, welcome to my channel Billy New. Today I'm going to show you how to naturally dye blacks, greys and dark colours with pomegranate, iron and logwood. This is a fun and relatively easy way to get dark colours on protein fibres. I hope you enjoy the process and get some helpful tips along the way. Hi guys, um, I just wanted to do a quick video today to show you a kind of relatively easy way to get black on your protein fibres um, or kind of dark greys. So to start with, I've already got some pomegranate skins in this pot, which I've used once before and I kept them in the, I stored them in the freezer. Um, and so I'm just heating them up to extract a bit more colour. And then I've got these pomegranates, which have been in my fridge for a little too long. Uh, they're not really good for eating now. So I'm going to collect the seeds. So yeah, I'm going to collect the seeds because they're always, I mean, even though I'm not going to eat them, they're fun to play with. Um, Billy likes painting with them and squishing them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take all the seeds out and keep the... I like seeds. You like these seeds? Ooh, this is definitely a bit mouldy. Do you want to help me take the seeds out? Oh, I cut his hand. Oh my goodness, you have got black hands. Yeah. You might need to wash your hands before you help me. Yeah. Yeah. If you um cut along the kind of pomegranates kind of have a, a seam that you can cut along to make them into segments and then you can just pop the stuff out like that. Pop the seeds out. These actually look, some of them look okay, kind of edible actually. I'm going to put, save some of those for eating ones. These are in the sink. Oh, those ones are the mouldy ones, we don't want to keep those ones. But if you want some paper, you can play with these ones. Do you want to get some paper? No? Okay. Don't use your, don't you, don't try your hands on my top. You don't want to help me? <laughs> oh, you little monkey! <sighs> Fun one. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have a pink, you're gonna have a pink bottom now, not that. <laughs> it's never clean doing stuff with you, is it? I mean, tidy. So once I've scraped out my skins and thrown the mouldy bits away um, and also that often there's like a big kind of this kind of hard stuff in there as so I'll get rid of all of that as well because it goes quite squidgy in the dye pot. So now I've got two pomegranate skins here, two fresh ones. And I'm just going to add them to the dye pot that I've already got going. And I'll keep them on a low heat for, <laughs> for maybe an hour or so, just until I can see a nice yellow colour. And I'm going to rip them up a bit so there's a bit more surface area. And while I'm, while these are kind of, <laughs> while the colour's extracting from these skins, I'm going to go and soak my fibres that I'm going to dye. So, oh yeah, I'm just soaking my fibres. I've got... Yeah, I'm going to leave them to soak while I'm extracting the colour from the pomegranate skins downstairs. And today I'm showing you how to kind of get an easy, well, easy-ish black with protein fibres. So I've got a pair of silk, silk trousers, oops, silk trousers in here. Um, I've also got a linen pair of overalls, which I'm going to do an experiment with, but that's not for, for today. There, so... They're just soaking now. Yeah. 
So there's a couple of steps um, getting greys and blacks with protein fibres. And while I'm soaking my fibres and extracting the colour from my pomegranate skins, I'm also going to prepare the dye bath of logwood. Um, logwood's a really great... Just a make... Uh-oh. This is logwood. Okay. And it comes from a tree called the logwood tree. And I think it comes from the heartwood, which I'm guessing is in the middle of the tree because it's called the heart. Um, and it gives this really amazing, really vibrant purpley colour as soon as you put the liquid on it. And then with a few modifications, it can help achieve a black colour in your fibres when you naturally dye them. Got it? Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just preparing my vat for later for when I want to use it. I'm extracting some of the colour and then I'll put it into my bigger dye, dye pot and add um, some extra water. But for now, can you see that incredible colour that comes out straight away? Lilac. And just so you can see the colour, I'm going to attempt without spilling. Put some in a glass. Um, also, I just wanted to say that I didn't weigh that logwood. Um, I just threw it in, used my intuition as to how much would be a good amount. It's really potent, so I'd say that's going to be plenty for a pair of silk, silk mull trousers. My pomegranates have been um, gently simmering for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and the colour's looking really nice and kind of yellowy orange. I don't know if you can see that in there. I'll put the light on maybe. Um, now I'm going to strain all the bits out of this, this pot and then I'm going to put it back in, add some extra water and then I'll put my fibre in. So this is quite a big pot and I'm going to just pour it. Mommy, look. What are you doing with my thermometer? Watch out, sweetheart. This is actually a little bit hot. Gets a bit complicated over here when you don't have enough big pots. Just catching all the little bits in the sieve, hopefully. This is my um, strained pomegranate dye. It's looking nice and rich. I don't know if you can see that colour there. It's better light over here. Okay, and now I'm going to put it back into this pot. I'm so, so hot right now. So I'm just filling up this pot <coughs> so that there's with extra water so that there's enough room for my trousers to move around in there. And that's gonna be too heavy for me to carry now. change because I was too hot in my jeans but now I'll probably just get my white dress my white skirt dirty okay I'm heating up the strained liquid now and I'm going to put my silk trousers 
into the pot. Pre-soaked silk trousers. These have also been mordanted with alum as well. So let's see what happens. I'm going to stir these really regularly, heating them gently for about another hour or until I feel like I've got a good kind of yellow. They're already pretty, pretty yellow, so yeah, just going to keep going until I'm happy. I'll stir these as regularly as possible. Make sure that the colour gets in all the creases and you can see there's plenty of liquid in there so they can move around nicely. So I'm also putting these in who are destined for a different journey but they're starting off in the same place as the silk trousers. And these are a linen pair of overalls. Mommy, yes. what did you cut those? Oh, to, because to get some roots to grow on them in the water. Can you see the little white things at the bottom? Yeah, those, I'm not, I'm really those are the roots growing and then I'll be able to plant them again and hopefully get some more indigo from them. There we go. So here's the colour after about an hour of simmering. This really beautiful, rich yellow colour. It's hard sometimes to commit to changing the colour when it looks this good, but I'm going to take you now to the next stage in getting darker colours on your protein fibres. I've got one specific pot that I use just for iron. Um, iron is a mordant and it's also a colour modifier, so it can really shift the colours of your um, fibre to a much darker colour. Um, I just put one spoonful, one teaspoonful of ferrous powder into some water in my iron pot um, and stirred it with my dedicated iron spoon as well. And then I just gently submerge the fibres into the liquid, stirring them regularly for about maybe 10 minutes or until the colour went to a nice dark um, rich kind of this was almost like a green color the yellow and the iron kind of almost made a kind of green then i gave the fibers a little rinse to get rid of the excess iron water um, and then they're ready for the next stage so now i'm just taking my pieces out of the pot Them a rinse. I'm going to give them a quick rinse before we move on to the next stage. So I, I feel like these are going to turn out really well. You can kind of just get a feel when things are going to go good or go bad and I just think it's so important it really pays off to just take your time stir really regularly, strain your dye bus if you want an even colour and just kind of, I often get oops, disappointing results when I rush and this I've really taken my time over, really prepared the fabrics and taken my time over the process and they're just looking so gorgeous and now like I said with the the previous um, stage I felt like I wanted to keep that colour and now I feel like I want to keep this colour but I'm going to go on ahead with the next stage in getting this protein fibre as black as possible. On to the next phase so this is the logwood um, that I showed you the, the, the wood chips earlier. I'm going to put it into my iron only pan 
because as you can see at the moment it's kind of a deep purpley reddy kind of colour but with iron hopefully it will start to turn a dark blue or black this is just the colour that I've been extracting slowly over the past couple of hours and I'm going to top that up with water um, so that my fabric can move around freely in the pot. I've got my protein fibre silk trousers here. I've just rinsed the iron out of them. Just a quick rinse. And you can see they've gone really dark compared to the bright yellow that they were a minute ago. Now I'm going to take my iron spoon over to my iron pot and I'm going to oops, put it into my logwood dye which at the moment is still kind of a ready purpley colour and hopefully with the iron on the trousers and the little bit left over in the pot it will start to go a kind of darker bluey purpley blacky colour. going to turn on the heat and put it on a gentle heat for I'd say another hour. See that it kind of looks almost black already. I feel like a witch making this colour. I love it. These are my linen overalls, which are destined for a different outcome, or a different journey anyway. So this has been gently heating for about an hour and this is the colour that we've got now which looks pretty damn black to me. Obviously it's still wet so it will dry a bit lighter. Um, I'm going to take the silk trousers out now and give them a rinse but I'm going to leave the, the linen in a bit longer just to give it a chance to soak up a bit more colour. So as it's hot just be careful when you're taking things out of a hot pot that's my technique just rinse my bowl and my trousers at the same time these are going to be available on my website, by the way, if you like the look of them. I'm literally just rinsing this with cold water right now. When they're dry, I'll give them an iron and then I'll give them a, a real wash with some soap some pH neutral soap. Now I'm just giving, rinsing the excess colour off. Kind of quite, they've got a bluey tint to them now before they had a, what is it what? They had a bogey green tint, <laughs> khaki green. And now it's just a blacky blue colour. these into the light so you can see the colour a bit better. There are many ways to get blacks, greys and dark colours but this is just a little combo that I've come up with that suits me. Sometimes the colours change a little when they dry so I may give them another dunk if I want them even darker or I may just decide that I love the colour how it is and leave them as they are. 
This technique does work best with protein fibres, but it does have some cool results with cellulose fibres as well, so I'd really encourage you to try and experiment um, and see what colours you get with both of them. As usual, if you like what you see and enjoy our videos, please like, comment and subscribe and please head over to our website, it's billynew.com and my Instagram is billynewapparel as well to see what else we get up to.